Good morning, Free Motion Friday fans. Welcome to Free Motion Fridays with Kate Quinn. And if you can let me know, please, if you could see well and if the lighting is good, that's always important before we start. So I appreciate your feedback because what I see may not be what you see. All right, so I think we've got a couple people. And let me go ahead and see if we can watch this. Hi, Linda. Hi, Nan. Okay, you guys, since you're here, what do you think? Can you see okay? Everything looks good to you? Okay, I'm going to give you the real quilter deal today. So, I am suffering from PQCW syndrome today. Does anybody know what that is? <laughs> PQCW. Post quilter cut it wrong syndrome <laughs> today. So I'm, I'm going to share that with you real quick before we start. I hope you don't mind. But I think this could happen to anybody and it's not the first time that it's happened to me. So I thought I would share it and talk about how you can fix this if it ever happens to you. Because it, it's pretty traumatic. <laughs> it sticks with you. All right, I'm going to show you up close. Ready? Here we go. Do you see that? Right? Here, I'll scoot it down a little bit. Right there. <laughs> I was trimming my quilt. And dang it, if I didn't trim it wrong. I sure did, I trimmed it poorly. So, how do you fix it when that happens? I lucked out, this is actually scrap that I cut off of another piece. I actually didn't have any more. You would think I would have this piece that I cut off, right? I didn't. They took the trash out, I, I was looking in my quilt trash because I have only fabric in this one bin and um, they took it out and they threw it away so I didn't have anything I didn't have any more of this fabric so I went through my little scrap and I found it and I want to show you how I assembled it real quick so I'm going to pull this apart so I cut this white piece so that the edge was straight and it was the length of the quilt and you'll see later maybe I even had to piece it right I didn't have a long enough piece I had to actually piece it so I did that on both sides so I pinned this piece on the back side just like this like you would see it here and then on the other side so this is the raw edge right there in that little zigzag and I did the same thing on this side so this is what it looked like when I was actually sewing it it was these pieces right here and they were just laying on here and I pinned from this side. I pinned going that way so there were no pins out here. Then I cut this edge straight and I'll flip it over and just pretend that this was the foot, right? If this was the actual regular sewing foot, I used a knit overlock stitch, right? So it has a straight stitch on this side and a straight stitch on this side and I fed the needle right down the center and I let the zigzag connect both of these in the middle. And then I had a nice seam on this side. Plus that extra stitching all in here is going to make sure that this just moves just like the rest of the quilt and that there's no gap or anything like that. So by feeding it right down the middle, I attached this edge and this edge. Plus I got the seam and then I could flip these over and you can see it is a very nice seam. Of course, it's a seam, right? So what did I do in the areas where I had trouble? I had to go back in with my thread and I had to clean up any edges that had been cut off. So you can see I did that there. I came in and I filled this back in. I filled in the circle. I filled in the square. And here I had to fill in a little bit. Since we are quilting a lot, I figured it's not gonna show. I'm just gonna go with it. You know, 
sometimes when you have a quilt, it may show a little bit more. This is white. All of the thread is very low volume. I can probably get away with it. You may have more matching and things like that. You know, if you have different piecing colors and everything, it is not easy to do that. Far better to mark the cut first, double check that it looks how you want it, and then put the ruler on it. <laughs> so lesson learned. It'll take a few days for me to recover from my syndrome as torture. Okay. So anyway, what do you think? Do you think you would ever do that? Had anybody ever cut theirs wrong? I know I have. This is not the first time. It's rare now. I think I was in a hurry. I bought the binding and I wanted to actually bind the quilt and then finish these last little corners. Uh, that was not a good idea. <laughs> so, okay, let's do one more thing before we sew. Always, always test, test, test. Okay, here is your number one thing, right? Put this down and tug on this thread right here. Just pull on it, right? Right now, that is so tight. I'm going to lower that. Like, it's so tight, I can barely pull that thread. I think I would break it. Okay, there we go. That's better. If you lower your foot and you pull on this thread and it just goes whoosh, right towards you and your foot is down, then you have no tension. If you have your foot down and you pull on this and it feels so tight that it's going to break, that says that you probably have too much tension for that setting, for that thread. So this is a really good pre-check to make sure that your thread is going to behave. You can pretty much pre-tighten it to get it where you want to go. Now let's pick up the bobbin thread. Okay, we always want to do that. So you're just needle down and up. There's my bobbin thread. So I've got both of them. And now I want to check. This is a little scrap sample here of the same thing. I want to make sure that I have a pretty look on my stitches. So I always have a little basket of these guys. And I try to have a various grouping. It's mostly blacks and whites. But I also have just random batting like this because maybe this is a specific fabric and I need this batting or I need this other batting. You can see they're very different. This is Quilter's Dream. This is, I think, Pellon mixed. This is Warm and White right here. So, you know, depending on what batting I'm using, I, I have three different battings, four different battings in my sewing room, and I have those little scraps that match up to that and that way I can do a little sample and a little test of my actual batting and potentially some scraps from my actual quilt. I always do some little curvy lines, some loop-de-loops, and then you can check, do I have a good look? So this is the pink on the top and it's the white. So you can see there's a distinctive color difference. So if I could see the pink on here, that means that on the back, the pink is lazy. The pink is not pulling up enough to keep the pink on the top. And so right now, I actually think it looks good. I don't see any pink on the back, and I don't really see any white on the top. I think that the stitching looks pretty. You see the needle hole, but I don't see kind of a weird flatness with this pink thread. If the pink thread is just laying on there, and the white isn't basically pulling it down and giving you those little dips, then that means that you need to loosen up the top tension because then what's happening is this pink is just pulling so hard that it's just laying on there and the white's not really doing anything. So always check your tension before you start because that leads to crying later if you don't do it. <laughs> Ask me how I know. I've cried a little bit. Okay, we only have two more. Can you believe it? We're almost done. Let's go ahead and we're going to quilt this out. And let's put um, a little pink echo on here. And we'll actually quilt in the echo. So let's see if we can make the echo first because we want to make sure we have enough room for it. Let's see. I know we won't have enough room right here. Oh, I have a good idea. 
I have an idea, so just bear with me. Let's echo it like this. Let's see, can we do it? Oh, okay, I gotta think about it for a second. Let's make this line right here. And this is the center. So let's go like this. Oh, I don't know. I don't like it. Forget it. <laughs> I tested it all out, right? I tried it before, but it didn't work out. Okay, you know what? We're just going to quilt all around that. We haven't really done any meandering with this whole thing. We haven't done like just straight up meandering. So this will be a good opportunity to put this in. Am I starting in the middle? Yes, I am. Can I start anywhere I want? Yes. These are going to be really small. And let's give some tips about when you're doing this. Let's go ahead and get this thread secured first because we definitely want to get that thread out of there. So I'm using just very small finger movements. And we're going to go around this way and we'll come back and fill in here. We have enough room. So this part we're not going to try to fill. We're going to sort of make our visual mark right there. We're going to try to fill that way and go all the way around. All right, let's cut those threads and get them out of there because we're going to kind of quilt over that and we don't want them in there. When you're quilting this small, I want you to think of this as scribble, scribble quilting. When you were a kid and you had your crayon and you were just scribbling around, that's all. That's all you're trying to do. If you cross the line, will the world tilt on its axis? No, it won't. Nobody's going to care. This quilting is so tiny that it won't matter. It's fine. Just let yourself relax. Okay, one thing. Quilt fast. Put that gas down to the floor, right? And I'm just using my fingertips. If you wanted to do this with more of an open toe, that is also a good idea. I think it is hard to see this one with the ruler foot, but it's so tiny, nobody's gonna care. And if you need to travel, you could travel right on your ditch line of your actual stitching right there. So I'm gonna come out a little bit and fill this in in like a little linear pattern. What I mean is if I come across a little bit on a line, so we'll do that now, we'll kind of go out a little bit here and we'll wiggle it around and then we'll backfill it of a certain width, okay? That helps keep it not quite such a line, like making it go linear. You get a little more wiggle that way. So then I'll come back and fill this area. And right here. Okay, so it looks good, I think. I, I like how it's looking. It's definitely going to let this part show and another thing that we can do is actually kind of go around the edges of this with that pink and what that will do is really make a very distinctive closure between those two areas so we're going to kind of come in here and then we'll fill in a little towards the center and not to make it too linear i'll come out again and then we'll just fill this in okay and then we'll wiggle right over that top so we can come out a little bit and we'll work our way to fill this slant. So you kind of are thinking about creating a little bit of a wiggle pattern for yourself. So here we're going to come back in and fill in that little area. And then we're going to go down so it doesn't look like a line. We just don't want to do it in, in like a straight lines, kind of a lines. We want to create little chunks so you can't detect it. It's kind of like doing tiles in your bathroom. So we're gonna kind of come down here and we'll fill this in. And rather than just go straight up, we're gonna come out and now we'll wiggle this back a little bit. So very small movements. I mean, I'm literally just barely moving my fingertips. And notice that the machine is a little faster. With this tiny little thread and with these very tiny stitches and you're only moving a little bit, if you are moving just a very tiny, tiny bit, okay, if my dots are far apart, like my stitches are far apart like that, 
think I've said this before, but you know, if you're doing a dot to dot and you go dot to dot to dot to dot to dot to dot like that, see how choppy that that is going to look? It, it's more of a kind of like a little angular, right? But if we put our dots super close together, like we've put three dots or four dots in between every one of those, that is what's going to make this look a little smoother with our little wiggle right here. Okay, so let's come out so we don't have, again, that line will come this way a little bit. And then we'll work towards the center and close that in. Come back on this side a little bit. This is the, um, a four inch block and it is stitched with the spin effects number four. And it's just a very basic spin effects number four. There's nothing fancy about it. It's not complicated. It's all just very regular. It's an eight point crosshair. So let's go ahead and we'll go all the way out here and we'll kind of come around on the other side. We're probably coming out more than we need to. I don't care. I'm gonna leave a gap. And now we're gonna start filling in that gap. So come down a little bit, and then we'll work it maybe like in a little circle. Okay, and then we'll start filling this in. Kind of come back and getting these little areas. So I'll come out a little bit, and now we'll do this triangle chunk here on the bottom. Trying to get close to the edges of the design that's really going to make a difference in how we can make it pop. If we have a little gap between where the edges of the meander are and the existing design, that's when you might get a little too much of this area right here sticking up. We want right next to the edge to be fairly tightly compressed because we don't want that to really show at all. So I'm going to come up a little bit because this is going to be my seam allowance eventually, so I want to make sure I'm all the way to it. So again, let's go this way and then we'll kind of come backwards. So we'll fill a little bit on this side. We want to leave a channel. So we'll go ahead and just fill it in kind of a little wiggly chunk right here. So we got to come back over here and fill this all in. Nice and speedy. Having such a fine thread here is really, really convenient because then you can really hide it. If you cross over or whatever, if your little curlies come together, nobody cares. Would this take a long time? Would I want to do this on like a giant quilt? No, I wouldn't. I would want to find a bigger fill that could fill more freely and faster perhaps. But I, I'm okay to do this in small areas. It's important to practice the meander at the scale that your quilt might need it, because sometimes different quilts are gonna need different things. So we're coming all the way out to this boundary right here. So I see a little gap, so I'm just gonna wiggle in and fill it in. So that's one thing about this thread, is that if you do end up with a gap, you can just come back in, start it anywhere, and just fill that in a little bit more, and nobody would even be able to tell. So let's come down a little bit since we're kind of, we don't want to be in a line. So we'll come this way and we'll fill this backwards. Okay. So right here, I'm getting up close to the edge right there. Right in nice and close, put a little curl in that little empty spot. Okay, let's turn it so you can see. I'm loving it, you guys. It looks awesome. All right, let's keep filling it in. We're almost done here. So let's kind of go in towards the center. And we'll just wiggle it around. All right, and I'm gonna end in the design. Okay, so good freehand practice. Let's just fill it in right along the edge. 
I'm just going right on the side of the existing stitching. Notice that I have a really nice rhythm. The needle is moving at a nice, smooth, continuous pace. But I am going slower than I was before. I want to make sure that I try to stay on the line. So that's what I'm doing. I'm concentrating on looking just a little bit ahead. I'm just trying to put the needle right on the outside of the existing stitches to make sure that this whole area is nice and closed. So let's see if we can show you the difference. Can you see right in this area right here where there's no double stitching around the edge right here? But if you look, let's see if we can actually take it out. We'll just take it out Ugh, because we can, right? I want you to be able to see the difference. We are in pretty tight, so we'll definitely, um, I think, be able to see it. So I'll start right there again, but I'll have to attack over it. So let me see if I can just get you a little shadow on it. Let's see. Can you see it? Do, do you see any of the extra shadow right there? How this just makes this puff up just a little bit more. Whereas this is still just a little bit flatter right on that side. Let's come out a little bit. The other way. Okay. Right, so I'll try to put a little shade on it so you can see it. But I do think that extra stitching right there, what it does, if, if there's any little areas that weren't punched down by this first round of stitching, then when you put another round on there, you're ensuring that every little tiny space is pushed down. I know it's a very fine detail. You know, for some people, that's not going to be worth it. They're not going to care. They don't need that level of detail. But this is all about detail quilting. That's what this whole class is about. How to get more textural value for your effort. Okay, so we'll just very slowly, very carefully come right down the line. And you can even put a little more in there if you want to. It's okay. If you want to do more than just an extra round, like if you want to actually put a little thickening in there, then when you do it, don't do the whole thing all at once. Don't, don't go around and around and around. Do like two little section and then another little section back and forth. That makes sure that you can kind of fill it in and observe it as you go. So that is a nice way to get extra texture in there. If you want that line to be just a little thicker, that's a way that you can do it. So Jamie Whalen, Quilter's Apothecary, he does a lot of, of what I would call texturizing with the triple, quadruple stitch lines to really thicken up the lines and make sure that the texture shows. And I, I remember being kind of afraid of that a little bit. And then I saw his work and I was like, well, okay, why? Why should I be afraid? It looks awesome. I think we're done, right? I'm not sure. <laughs> Just sew a little bit more, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll tack it off real quick. I love it. I love that it makes my little star really show. Let's cut those threads and then we'll kind of get a good look at it. Ooh, I love it. What do you think? Ooh, it makes such a big difference. It does, right? And so look, there's like a little space right there. I could put more in there if I want to. Do I need to? I don't know. Whatever, it's fine. It looks fine. Nobody's going to come in and say, oh, you didn't get that little spot right there. It's fine. Just like it's quilters design okay yeah well Christy I agree that double stitching and um, if you sew if you have like this right here and you quilt one eighth inch away with a neutral thread like a white thread you can actually make this line appear thicker but not have a, a double line with this colorful thread like if you used a white and it's very fine you can actually quilt a, an eighth of an inch away and what you get is a little bit of a thicker actual quilted line with compression and I think it does make a big difference. So you know what else I would probably want to do here? 
I would, I think I would want to scribble in these little fingers right there. What do you think? Or maybe in this one. Do you guys have a preference? I think we could add just a tiny bit more texture if we just compressed a couple of those. So let's do that one. This one's pretty small, but we'll do that one. And I think that'll just set it off. Plus we can travel from there to there as we do it pretty quickly. This will only take a few minutes. Okay, yeah, see, it's never quilted enough. Just quilt it some more. <laughs> all right, here we go. We're all about the quilting, right? That's why we're here. So again, this is a very small area. So this is one of those things where I think it would be good if you um, sort of follow the line a little bit like we did in some of the areas. We'll kind of make this like a little leaf shape. So it won't be like ridiculously compressed. It'll look like it has some definition. So right where we are at, okay, we, are, we have to kind of get back to the middle. So we'll come up just a couple stitches, we'll come in and then curve out. So all of these will have double stitching as well. And then right to the center and then back on the other side. Okay. And then I'm right to the next one. Come up about two stitches just to give you a little space from the edge there when you're coming up. Does anybody need me to draw this out so I can show it a little better? I know it's really small. When we get done, I'll show you the stitched look and then I'll draw with the uh, pen on top of it if anybody needs that. Always coming back down to the bottom so we can orient the curve. Coming out a little bit now, trying to follow the other side once we get past the halfway point. We wanna make sure that each of these lines, as we come from, we're basically at that junction. I'll try to point to it. Where we are right now with the needle, we're at this apex, and we're gonna follow the arc in and kind of wave ourselves and right to the center and down. And then right when we're at the center, we have to curve this way now to follow this curve on that side. Okay, so let's go ahead. Here we go. Take one stitch up just to give us a little space to make the curve. And right to the top and now we'll start curving the other way. So a lot of center stitching right in the middle which is good. That'll give us some nice fun detail right there, nice texture. So you got to listen to the sound of my machine. It's important that I try to have as rhythmic of a sound as I can because that rhythm is also giving me information about how fast I need to move. Like, it, you know, to me, there's a little bit of a dance that I've gotten used to as I've listened to my machine. And if you can kind of get to that place too, you can really regulate your stitches. Now, I do have a stitch regulator on one of my machines, on my Bernina and also on my long arm. And on my long arm, I love it. I think it's very easy to use. And on my Bernina, it works really well, but if you have already taught yourself how to move, then I find it a little bit more confining because I already know how to control that. So I'd rather let the machine respond to me than me have to respond to it. However, when I first got my BSR, I will tell you, it was a good training aid. If it sounds like it's going too fast or crazy or it's speeding up and it's slowing down, what it's telling you is that you're going crazy, <laughs> that your speed and your movement is not under control. If your BSR sounds perfectly natural and smooth, then that's a sign that you are moving in a perfectly smooth way. Okay, I did it. I'm gonna quilt some more. We'll just put a little oval in each of these as we can. Again, the benefits of the really fine thread when you're doing really small detail work cannot be overstated. I could not put 
three lines of stitching in here with a 40 weight thread without it really seeming bulky and not looking too pretty. So if you have this area that you just want to do some really micro work in, I recommend these thinner threads for that purpose. So there's 80 weight deco bob, 100 weight Invisifil, Micro Quilter is a polyester that is 100 weight, that's by Superior. And then this is Kimono Silk, which is also by Superior. And then there's YLI Silk, which is also great and fabulous. And each one of those will have just a little different type of uh, movement. Silk has a really natural drape, so when I unspool it, it just kind of gently falls into a nice uh, movement. It doesn't have any kind of like wiry thing. I think we're done. Let's go ahead and we'll cut this. I think it really helps our little design show out so pretty. All right, cut all these threads, put them in the trash. Ooh, I love it. Look, so pretty. Right? So we get a little intentional quilting. So we're following that arc right there, and then in and out, in and out to the center, and then there there, there, and traveling right on the stitch line to get to the next section. When then I was finished, I started right here. I just followed inside and filled in those little fingers right there. So let's see if we can pull it out a little bit. Okay, so this is more of a like natural look, how it would look. Okay. All right. That's a little bit more quilty than I wanted in this space because I knew that it would have this full compression right against these other areas. Uh, that's just too bad. That's how it is. <laughs> okay, let's do our next one. We talked about this one a little bit. I want to put little mussels in here, like the clams type of thing. And I like mussels because they're a little bit more flexible in shape. They don't force you to be so round and perfect, which is good because I'm not. Okay, so if this is our little spot, we have only a very small amount of space with these little designs. Just make a little teardrop. You're just going to come over and you can come over. You can travel anywhere on this line to start your next one. So if you're in a certain spot and you feel like there's not enough room, like right there, or right here, you could just put a little half, half of one, right? So maybe it won't curve all the way down, but you can still put it in. And then the next one, like this. And if I wanted to, if I don't want to start it right there, that would be very, uh, like they'd all make this big line, right? So I can just come over here and I can start another one over there and go a different direction. And I can do halfway and then I could start another one. This is great for filling in large areas really fast. And anytime you need to, you can echo over the top to get to a different direction so you don't start in the same spot. So my thought was each one of these little areas right here, this is the, sort of the biggest space that is available. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in these. And then here we'll just do one or two lines, straight lines and get to the center and then one or two straight lines, and then get to the fill area, and then we can travel. So we'll be using the existing stitch lines for this to travel whenever we need to. We can start anywhere we want, but we can also start in the corner. The thing is, I think the corners are harder. We wanna make sure that our design goes lots of different directions, because we don't want them to try to match each other, because they're too hard. I'm letting the needle be the guide. I'm trying to come back around. So here, let's come out and we'll just make one here because we don't have a lot of room there. And I'm gonna travel right on this existing line here. And we'll just make another one and he can just go a totally different direction. 
If you get down to the bottom right there and you don't have enough room for another one, just cut across the seam line in order to fill it in. Here we'll do partial and then on the seam line and fill it in. And then we'll come back to the seam line and right back up to the top. So let's do a wiggly line since I can't do a straight line. And we'll just wiggle again, and wiggle one more. And then we'll be at the top. So there's four lines in there that we have. So when we do the next one, we wanna also do four. And I don't think I can get a good curve, so we'll do those on the other side. When we come around and we go that way, we'll start at the bottom. The, the reason I'm saying that is this has hardly any space at the top, so initiating the curve is difficult because there's no room, right? And if I'm trying to echo the curve, well, I might get a good echo if I have just this little thing at the top, but I will think I'll do better, and it's in my pathway anyway. So let's go ahead and we'll start the little muscle right here. It's just somewhere, kind of start going. Traveling back out on the existing one, putting one in the corner there, one more echo, and then we'll change directions because that's a really convenient place to change directions. Okay, we'll come over, and then right here, we'll put another one in until we touch right there. And here, I would just echo that line. There's not really enough room for another one. So let's just come right around this one. Again, doubling up those stitches, following the stitch line, and now we're at the top, and we can just make our wiggly line. And then we'll echo over top. And we're at the center. Okay, so we basically are getting two different looks, a little contrast, a little less quilted here, a little more quilted there, and now we've got our pattern. So we don't want to start in the same spot. So let's come down, we've done the corner, we've done that side, so let's come down here a little bit. We don't want them all to be the same. So right there I have to travel a little bit right in the seam because there's not enough room for another one. And we'll just fill in a little arc right there. And we'll just come back up to the top. So wiggly line. And then echo. Echo. This one's going quickly. All right, let's make sure you can see. So now we've done here, corner, here. So let's kind of come on this side for this one. Teardrop, trying to get back to the same start point where we have that muscle. And I like to do three, one, two, three, and then another one. This one will just kind of connect right there and come back. And then I'm gonna come out here to make the next one. A little echo right over the top and travel. And we'll make this one go this way. And here I'm gonna actually just curve around and follow that other one, because that look like he needed to go the other direction. Okay, wiggly line. 
that's two, three, and four. And we'll tack it off. Okay, so we could put something in here. Um, I, I think that there's enough going on already that we don't necessarily want to do that. So this is already giving us a little frame and these are kind of tight. So if I did anything, it would just be straight lines, but because we have these lines so close right here, I think it would just be too much. I think it would take away from the design. We'd end up with lots of lines everywhere. All right. What do you think? Kind of wiggly, I love it. <laughs> so those are our straight lines right there, our little curvy lines right in the center. So it just adds a little movement, a little energy to that space. I wanna show you one thing I did that you guys were not here for. And I think I have enough room to, to do it here. Um, let me pull it up for you. Ooh, isn't that cute? We didn't show this. I put an echo around my circle, right? Because I wanted it to have a little bit more detail. We didn't do that on the video, but you're just basically putting your circle centered right on the pinhole right there, the center. And I just put my circles on quilts on there. This is a 4.5 inch circle, so let's see. I'll show you. I use the center and I use my 4.5 and I just put it on there like that and I stitched around it and then I just moved it. I didn't even put a pin in it. I just kept moving it and aligning it. And right in the corners, I think that, especially with this extra seam, it'd be nice if we do a little detail in there. And it's something that you could use for many different corner areas. So let's pretend that this is sort of the diagonal right there, visually. I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna curl that way, this way, make a little swirl and come back. And you probably wanna push your swirl out a little bit. Mine's a little bit tight. So then we'll go this direction and we'll swirl the other way. So depending on where you want your cross to be, like this is about a half of an inch, right? So maybe I would mark a half inch and say, okay, that's where you got to curl. You got to cross right there. So let's do the other side and we'll just put one right on this side because otherwise it'll be a little messy for you to see. The reason I did not do this side is because I know that I'm going to put um, a half inch binding on this and I wanted to make sure that these little corners on this side are within the binding, that they don't have, you know, the edges cut off. So swirl, follow it back, cross over. And they can be ribbon or they can be tracking right back on the existing line. It's up to you. If you're not comfortable tracking back right on the existing line, I still think the ribbon looks absolutely amazing. And that just means you're vaguely following, but you're not right on top of each other. So that's a good way, you know, to practice if you can't track right back on the existing line. I love it, you guys. It's so cute. So you could put that in anything where you had just a little tiny uh, triangle or something like that and you just need a little flourish. That could be so cute. And that is basically continuous and then you're in the seam. So it, you know, if you're ditching or anything like that, it's really easy to put this in. So guess what? We're done. We're done, pretty much done. I'm not gonna quilt it anymore. Oh, I don't know. I'll probably quilt it a little bit more, but I think I've shown Basically everything that I think that could fit in here without being overkill. This is session eight, and I think maybe some of you have seen, but I, I'll pull it up. I actually have made my top, so let me go grab it and show you that. 
the pattern's not yet available. It's almost ready, but I, I need to do some fine tuning and make sure that it's ready for people. All right, let's see. Oh, I should have left it on the wall. You know what, I'm gonna put it on the wall and then we'll talk about it. I'm gonna bring the camera over there. All right. Close your eyes just for a second. You're gonna be jumbled around. All right, I didn't want to make you dizzy, so. Let's see if we can uh, get this to look nice and smooth without being too crazy. I'll just try to bring it up a little bit. Try to get that camera so it's not gonna be uh, causing you a neurotic <laughs> look to it, right? So I guess we need to just come back a little bit so you could see it better. All right, yes, I have mess. You know, I have all kinds of stuff everywhere. That's always how it is. So, I don't know why we can't see all of it. My camera has a little mind of its own. It's on this clamp that makes it a little difficult. So I, I wanna just talk about it for like a minute, if you'll let me, if you don't mind. If you gotta go, I understand. Okay. So I can't necessarily see what you see right now because I'm behind the camera, but this block is a 12 inch for this entire part right here. This teal, this square and a square is a 12 inch block. And when we did it as a whole cloth, there was no separation here between this and this. This part just touched right onto the square. And I felt like that, doesn't let your designs stand apart if you're doing an actual piece area. So I added this. This is a one and a half inch spacer so that the designs in here and the designs in here are not going to be touching the center block. So that's why I put that in there. Then this is three inches. This is three inches all the way around. There's an entire border that's three. So these are the triangles right here. And I had to make them a little bit bigger because of this spacer. And then this whole width right here is four. So this is two and a half by four and a half right here, four and a half inch squares. And then this is a whatever fits in that space. And then again, we put a spacer right here. The spacer is to separate these two areas so that whatever design is here is not encroached on here. And then these little spacers, these are only a quarter inch, but all those blocks on the top are all the six inch blocks. So the point of it is to give you different sizes to work with, different areas, and now it is much harder than just whole cloth because you're ditching in the ditch, you have to follow the colors, you know. I'm gonna probably be quilting this in a light teal, kind of that bright teal that you see on there. I'm gonna go ahead and use some teal in there because the whole purpose of this is so that the quilting designs really, really show. That's what I want for all of you. You could make this bigger easily by just adding a simple, like a five inch border if you wanted to, or putting another color frame and then putting a border on it. This is maybe a little bit small for a baby quilt. It's 31 by 36, but as a learning opportunity, you could do all of those ruler work designs and then you can do all of those free work, free motion designs and fill that in. And it would give you that platform to test all of those things and try them out with the actual pieced project. So anyway, this will be available soon. I wanna let you know that next Friday I am gone. So there will be no free motion Fridays and I'll post a note to remind you, but I'll be traveling and out of town and I will also not be available on next Sunday. I will be available this Sunday,
but next week I will be traveling home on Sunday, so I will not be available. So thank you guys so much. Uh, I haven't conceptualized my new uh, project for us. <laughs> I haven't figured it out yet. But uh, we'll start something fun and interesting coming up soon. So maybe um, if people are interested, maybe we'll have a, a assembly class or something like that. If anybody needs a class on foundation piecing, this has some minor foundation piecing. So I think we might end up doing something to share those topics. Okay. All right. Have a great day, you guys. Happy quilting. Bye. <laughs>